Hi, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to the Ask Valor Masterminds podcast. I'm Galen. I'm Joe. And we're coming at you from the BD Local Studios in Tacoma, Washington. This podcast is brought to you by CR Gutters and A Advanced Septic Services. Thanks for tuning in. Enjoy the show. Thank you. All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Ask Valor Masterminds podcast brought to you by CR Gutters and A Advanced Septic Services. My name is Galen. I'm Joe. And uh, we're here coming at you from the BD Local Studios in sunny Tacoma, Washington today. <laughs> so, Joe, why don't you tell our listeners and viewers, and especially our new ones, um, thanks for tuning in, how this podcast came to be. Sure. So, originally it started out as a Facebook group page called Ask Valor Masterminds, where we wanted to bring businesses together to communicate to one another, to share tips or ask questions that maybe someone else has encountered the same thing and they can kind of help answer that question or guide them along. So we decided what would be better than that and to just create a podcast and to bring on different um, speakers and experts in their field and kind of tell us their background, how they got started, uh, share some tips, and hopefully our viewers can learn something. Awesome. So this is already our 12th episode. So for people that watch and tune in, thank you for watching. Our last episode, just to kind of recap what we talked about, was our body language and business. So I noticed you're already people standing up. (laughs) So Kirsten had a lot of cool things to say that I think we don't normally think of. What was your biggest takeaway from our last podcast? Uh, Biggest thing here is posture. So I learned to, yep, I just saw Sadie do it too. Um, (laughs) When you say posture, people stand up straight, but you keep your elbows down to the side and back, and it tends to make your shoulders go forward. Right. The one thing I, two things, my takeaways were uh, eye contact, talking to people, so you're... uh, Genuinely engage. Mm-hmm. Then how I use my hands. Since I'm a heavier set, wider than normal human being, uh, I don't want to intimidate people physically. So like uh, coming open, open palms, um, not kind of lean forward or right. anything is kind of my biggest takeaway. And also then too, if you open up your shoulders when you talk, you become more vulnerable to the person you're talking to. Right. <laughs> Some people like that subconsciously. Mm-hmm. So primal instincts. <laughs> Anyway, we have a repeat guest, Joe. Do you want to introduce our guest seated between us? Sure. So this is Valerie. For those who you missed it last time, um, I don't think you guys did because by far social media has been our highest view so far with Mm -hmm. the show. People love to hear about social media marketing. Uh, So Valerie came on, um, I want to say it was our second episode, Mm -hmm. maybe third episode if I'm wrong, second or third, somewhere around there. And uh, so Valerie owns a social media marketing company. And I know her from just business to business networking groups. And I always look for top talent uh, as far as people that I can rely on and ask questions to and are going to give me honest feedback. Uh, So met her. I take her classes whenever she uh, uh, has classes. I immediately sign up for take it because knowledge is key. And if you're not continuing to learn, you're not continuing to grow. So um, something I believe in. And so that's where I met Valerie. All right. So Val, thanks for being here. Thank you for having me again. All right. Like being here. Awesome. So we're adding a new segment, our cue the image, our uh, eight advanced septic pump you up quote of the day. We think uh, inspirational words are important, especially when we talk about social media. Mm-hmm. So our pump you up quote of the day is, if the want to is there, the how to will come. So if the want to is there, the, mm-hmm. how, the how to will come. That's right? a good one. Especially in social media, people, is it going to happen? We have to want it to happen. You have to show some incentive, some intent. So we'll get into that. Next, we're going to have our regular segment, our CR Gutters Did You Know? Q Image 1. So there's a couple social media myths. When I asked Val to give us some content for the show, she gave us a list of things, and I perused through a couple of them, and we'll kind of just get our thoughts, her thought on uh, these quickly. So first image, our first myth, social media can replace a website. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. That's a big no, right? <laughs> nope. Huge no. And why Why do you think people believe that? Because a lot of people do. Well, because they're on social media, maybe they're getting a response from social media. So they're getting that engagement, the lead or questions. Or they're like, oh, well, I don't need a website. Um, what's the point of having a website when everybody's talking to me here? No, you need a website. And if any company or anybody tells you that you don't run away because they're wrong. You need a website. You need social media is not where the sale should be taking place. It's on the website or uh, wherever you sell your product or service at your storefront. Social media is the get to know me uh, place, not the place to sell. So you need a website. Right. And I say so. so I'm sorry. 
Yeah, because so many people will say, like, what's your website? Oh, Facebook me. And they no. assume, they, they're convinced that that's good enough. No. But there you go. Our next image, in-person networking is not needed. Hmm. Hmm. We're, a couple, we, we're a member of a couple of networking groups. Had I not been a part of a networking group uh, or, or attended networking meetings, I would have never met Valerie. Right. Same here. And my first customer, my first client came from a networking group. Um, it's, it's something you have to continue to do along with the social media. Um, I will never stop networking. It's a great place to make new connections and referrals in my opinion. So don't stop networking. Yeah. And nope. I, I don't think you could devalue the human connection part. No. no. I mean, it's funny. Um, and we'll pro we'll dedicate an episode solely on networking mm. for a future episode, but, um, there are people that I, that I know in their work and they'll slack or text someone. And that's their form of interpersonal communication. Like they don't, it's not face to face. They're in the same room chatting, but <laughs> that's nothing there. So it's funny when you talk about social media, it's like social, you're getting out yeah. and not like hiding behind a wall. Right. Right. So we'll definitely cover that again. Uh, next myth. It's all about quantity, not quality. No, <laughs> absolutely not. <laughs> and it's funny that People think that the more I have, the better things are going to be for my business. So if I have, you know, 10,000 connections on LinkedIn, I'm going to have all these great leads and phone calls and stuff. And I hope those things happen. But in reality and on average, no, that's not going to be that way. It's about the quality of audience members that you have on your different social media platforms. There is some play with this when it comes to Facebook, because Facebook is all about the Facebook business page. They're all about a certain number before they can help you, you know, with mm -hmm. the reach and engagement. But overall social media, it's, it, it is the quality. So. Awesome. Um, our next image, our next myth, this is a, <laughs> this is one I really chuckled at. So amazing results. <laughs> From social media will happen overnight, just like that, right? Absolutely. Poof. Poof. Got a Facebook page Abra -tabra, Abra -tabra, created a group. Boom. Customers. Right. Yeah. Is that <laughs> bust that myth for that us? That is so wrong. But I get that all the time from a lot of my clients. As soon as we create their pages, like the next day I'll get a phone call or email. I, I didn't get a sale. <laughs> I'm like, um, yeah, so you're not going to, it takes time on average for most businesses, social media marketing takes time to cultivate. You've the people don't know who you are. They don't know your brand. They don't know your product, your service. They don't know anything about you. That takes time to build. You have to connect first, build that relationship and gain the trust. Cause we all know people buy from people who they trust. It right. will happen, but it takes time. It is not going to happen overnight. Not unless you've got some. I don't know, fantastic product or service that somebody needs to have right this second. For most of us, no, it's going to take some time. Okay. Uh, totally agree. <laughs> Our next one, I had fun creating this image, so I can sell anything on social media. You see the picture of the sleazy salesman. Um, <laughs> just because they have social, they have a budget, like I'll sell this and I'll make millions. Um, what do you say to that, either of you? Oh, ugh. I mean, I could say that that's correct. You, that doesn't happen, even for things that I've tried to uh, promote events to. I mean, you really have to be engaging with people, uh, and you have to be building that trust. And so once you build that trust, I think maybe you can sell at that point, mm -hmm. but I don't think you can use social media to sell everything. Yeah, and you can't. Not every product or service is social media ready or savvy. You have to know what your product or service is, what your business is about. You need to know your audience too. If you don't have no clue of what your, who your audience is and you're trying to sell all these different things, it's not going to happen for you. So the sale can happen, but you can't just sell anything. You, it really takes time to figure out what your product service is, what value does it have, what problem does it solve, and who your audience is. Awesome. And with that, I want to add, make sure that if you are trying to use like Facebook sponsored ads mm -hmm. to make sure that you include the target demographic you're going after. Yes. Way too many times I see probably eight out of 10 ads on my feed from companies that are either one, not local or two out of state. Yep. Right. It's not customized for the experience. Which brings you probably to your next one of. So this last one. <laughs> so we have a lot of solopreneurs, entrepreneurs out there fellow business people, you are great at what you do. 
sometimes the marketing is sometimes daunting and it, you almost have, you know, you lose momentum during the day if you stop and do it. So this myth, I can do it all by myself. All by myself, right? Is there a song, right? Yeah, there is. Go. Cool. Want to break into it? <laughs> no, right. no. All right. All Go by ahead, myself. Bust well, out. No. <laughs> um, so this is where some people can do it if you're cut out. You have to be special. You have to be organized if you want to do it. But what are what's the common thing you see businesses who try to do it and often fail? What's one quick thought? Right. And I have to say most of my clients, they they fail at trying to do it on their own. That's why they I'm here. That's why I'm in the picture. They it you do you have to be able to manage your time not just your time managing your social media and time managing your business but also time managing your personal life so there's a lot that goes in it i mean i coach people on how to do this but usually by the time i'm done coaching them they're just like forget it here you do it i don't want to worry about it um you really if you want it done right i'll put it that way if you want it done right and correctly and to see results you, you really should hire a professional it is the best investment you could possibly make it's cost effective and it's something you don't have to worry about i mean if you are a restaurant owner you don't have time to go sit on a computer create the content the images put the logos on the images figure out when to post where to post what times to post who has time for that you have you have to go run a restaurant right that's where social media marketers come into play to help you not worry about that part. And this is what we do. This is what I do. I'm not something else. This is all I am. I do social media marketing. So rest assured when you hire someone like me, that's what we're going to do for you. We're going to make sure that your your brand is being aware and your audience is engaged in all of those things. So you don't have to worry about it. So when I see those ads, like I said, those sponsored ads where – Literally, you click on the name, and it's a construction company, and they do amazing work, but then you see, oh, my God, they're in Montana. And then you reach out to them and be like, hey, I saw your sponsor that on, on Facebook. Do you actually cover the Seattle-Washington area? No. No, I do not. Well, then who's managing your social media? Right. And the number one answer I get is I am. They're doing it themselves, and they're not sure how to do their ads. Ads are very complex. Um you really have to take, I had to take classes on how to learn how to do Facebook ads and Twitter ads, LinkedIn ads to do them the right way correctly and make them effective for my clients. So most business owners are just winging it, mm -hmm. trying something and they get nothing. They're like, I didn't get anything from the ad. I'm never going to do an ad again because you don't know what to do. Right. You're so again, just revisiting that our quote earlier, if the want to is there, the how to will come. Right now, for those people who can't hire someone or, or the people who do it on their own, we're going to give you some how-tos on how to do that. So QR, um, intro, intro image. So there's uh, three ways, three steps to increase engagement and build um, your brand in three simple steps. So we'll kind of go over those. So um, take notes, everyone. Our first one, so something pretty simple. Number one, connect first. So when you talk about connect, um, do I just connect it to my friends and family now, or what do you, when you, what do you mean? And what that? I mean when I say that, when you first create your social media account, or if you re-engaging back into your social media marketing, connecting first is not talking about your product, your service, or your business, really. You're going to talk about yourself, why you started your business, what your product or service means to you, and how passionate you are about your product or service helping your community, helping your audience. You're just going to share your story, your personal story and your business story. That's how you start connecting with the people. It's not about, I got this, I got this, buy this, buy that. You don't want to even do that right now. First, you want to let people get to know you, get to know your company and everything that it stands for. That's what the connection first is. Reach out to your family and friends. Have them come like your page. Any colleagues, neighbors, get them in there too as well. And then it starts going from there. It's funny because I – well, it's not funny, but I've seen a lot more people do video on social media because you're trying – people want to see the raw you, mm -hmm. and they want to see you – don't create a video. Well, create a video, but then also sh you know share that unedited version where you make all the mistakes, where you fumble over your words. Mm -hmm. um, people can connect with that. Yeah, and I do that all the time. Every time I make a video, I which I hate making videos because I <laughs> sound horrible and I look like a creature – <laughs> but I do it anyways because people want to see who their work, you know, who they may want to right. work with in the future. And I'm always messing up. I try to have a script on the side, but 
it never works out, but that's okay. People know she's a real person, a real human. She makes mistakes, but yet she's still getting her point across. Right, a real connection. Yeah. Uh, Next image. So number two is build relationships. So connect first, build relationship. Yeah, this is where you're starting to become friends with your audience. They're getting to know you. You're getting to know them. And it also depends on the kind of post that you're doing. So you're not just showing, you know, hey, I'm a roofing company. You're talking about, hey, what kind of roof do you like? You know, do you like the shingles? Do you like the metal? You're asking questions. You're getting opinions because then people are like, oh, hey, they really care about what I have to say or what, you know, my concern is about this type of roof. They're not just throwing a bunch of information at me that I don't know. So that's how you start building that relationship, getting personal is basically what you need to be doing. So how about um, customers, businesses with customers of different profiles? So there may be uh, four, three or four profile customers, right? Mm-hmm. So um, if it's like the restaurant, you know, like happy hour for people that get off work, uh, people are looking, there's a group that for the restaurant uh, that have kids and are there family friendly menus or is it date night? Is it, is it fine dining? How do you build a relationship within one platform to multiple audiences. And that's when you're going to have to do multiple different kinds of posts. That's one we talk about when connecting first, getting to know who your audience is. If you own a family restaurant during the day and then it's a, you know, hip hop club later on at night, you have to have those kinds of posts at those kinds of times for those different kinds of people talking about the different things. A video saying, hey, yes, we're a family restaurant, but you know what? If you're ready to turn it up, nine o'clock, we're going to play some Biggie Smalls, you know, or something. You, you get what I'm saying. So you've got to be able to connect and post those kinds of things at different times. You just got to know when, when they're on, who they are, where they're at, and when, where they're watching from or looking at it from. So where would someone find that information? Like? On Facebook. On Facebook. Um, on their business page, you, about section. And this is one, this is, sorry, this is a pet peeve. Fill everything out on your business profile, on your social media, please. Your about section should be filled out completely. Who you are, what you're about, your story. It could be in there, your story, you know, detailing the different kinds of things that your restaurant does. Your mission statement. All that's always left blank with a lot of people. Fill everything out. Leave nothing empty. All right. And then the third one, the third of the three simple steps. So connect first, number one, build relationship number two. Three is gain trust. So via social, I have a feeling of what it means. But um, in simple terms to our uh, viewers and l- listeners, what how, what can you, how can you explain gain trust? And basically what I mean when I um, say that is once you've connected and built that relationship, you're automatically going to gain that trust. People are going to trust you now. They've seen the kinds of things that you post. They've probably been to your establishment or maybe bought one or two things from your store, whatever it may be. They now feel comfortable in purchasing from you continually or making a big purchase or referring someone to purchase that, you know, that referrals are going to start coming in because people know who, Oh yeah, I know a person. I know a place. I know a great restaurant to take the kids. You know, I know a great company that does roofs in lickety split time. So once you've done these two things on a consistent basis, like Mm -hmm. all the time, you can't start it and then stop it. You got to keep it going. The trust will come. And then people like, well, when does the sale come after the trust? Once you've connected, built relationships, gained that trust, the sale will eventually come. You just got to be consistent with it. Keep it going. So this is a marketing podcast, but those three tips sound like just like personal relationships to connect first, build a relationship, gain trust. Um, you know, we're not pushing a dating site, anything <laughs> crazy like that. But social media engagement is almost you have to follow those steps, right? You do. So um, when you onboard a client, um, what are, for these three steps, what does that look like? Can you, for the person out there who's uh, watching that wants to start a business, mm-hmm. they, he or she has not done it yet, but they know they don't have money for a website or expensive brochures or flyers, but social media is something that they could control because they have their personal Facebook page. When you follow these three steps for that single business owner, potential entrepreneur mm-hmm. there, um, 
is is it as simple as following that or how how can they keep focused on following these three steps basically what i have them do um i do go over this and i call it this is my engagement marketing formula uh i call it and i have them look at this but also the big question that I ask them is, what do you want to get out of your social media other than the sale? I take sales and money and leads and all that out of the picture. With your social media marketing, what do you want to get out of it? What's your purpose for wanting to start a social media page, Facebook, Twitter, whatever that may be? And depending on their answer, then I can go, okay, well, these are the steps you need to do. You know, if you want to bring more awareness to your brand because you're brand new, nobody knows about you, then these are the things you're going to want to do. Um, the kinds of posts that, you know, I go over the kinds of posts that they should start creating and right. posting, uh, what kind of schedule they need to have to make sure their posts are being seen, especially if they're brand new on social media, they don't have analytics yet. They don't have a following. Right. So we try to figure those things out. And then basically the biggest issue with all business owners, new or old is consistency. Everybody gets excited about social media in the beginning. They're like, Oh yeah, it's fun. Okay. We're going to do it, do it, do it. And then they stop consistency is key you have to have a schedule you've got to plan out your day your week your month your year and stick to it you got to have that accountability person that's where someone like me comes in to stay on if you're going to plan if you're going to do it yourself if you're going to do it yourself i can still help keep you on track keep you on task make sure that you're doing connecting the building so that you can gain the trust and get that sale in the end Okay. And then I know on social media, Joe, you've done it for our stuff too. You could schedule your posts. And I think a lot of yes. business owners don't realize that feature, mm -hmm. you know, especially if time's very important. Um, you don't want to st stop four times and then for, uh, work on social media. You'd rather dedicate a set block during the week, run it. And then you do that same thing over the following week. We goes back to your consistency. Yeah, exactly. And that's part of it is scheduling. I have three different calendars that I work with uh, for myself and for my clients. And basically it's content calendar, social media calendar, and also my personal calendar. I have to coincide and make sure everything, you know, cause I've got to have some me time, husband time, kid time, you know, right. but also make sure I'm scheduling stuff for my clients. But yeah, I block out a day of the week, a couple hours, and I'm scheduling out a couple of weeks for this client on Facebook or Twitter. That way, I'm not having to go back to it every single day trying to figure out, oh, I need to post, I need to post. Pick a day of the week, schedule out some posts, and then you'd be done with it. And of course, if things happen in the moment, you know, something like if you are um, a restoration company and you go in and redo remodels and stuff, you want to take pictures of the before and after. Of course, post those things right away. But if you have general, regular postings already scheduled, you're going to save yourself a ton of time. And then you're always going to have great content, fresh and new, on your social media. And you're not having to be on it every day. There's no way I could be on it <laughs> every day if I didn't do this. So, so with, like, Twitter, can you schedule posts on Twitter? You can. I use TweetDeck. It is awesome. It is TweetDeck, and it's from Twitter. It's their own scheduling platform, and you can schedule out as far as you want to. It connects right to Twitter. All you can do is tweetdeck.com, whatever your Twitter name is. Log on, and boom. Live I blown use that. right now. We're going to have that. <laughs> uh, tweet when, deck. We, when we have our tweet finished deck. link posted on our uh, social media channels and on our website, mm -hmm. we'll actually have that link too. Some tips. I'll create a graphic for it that we so, could upload. Are there any platforms you can't schedule? So far, the only one that I haven't been able to schedule is the Google the Google page, Google my the business Google My Business yeah. page. I have not figured out a way. I'm still working on it. I've been trying to schedule that. It, it does. It's not doing it. It won't let me do it in Hootsuite or Buffer or anything. So I'm just like, man. So if if they could come up with their own scheduling platform, that would be awesome. So I have a question unrelated to that, but it's still social media mm -hmm. for, for Facebook. So how often should people change their, like their cover photos? I, I've seen Such a good question. number one, cause it's, it was irritating me. Like I've <laughs> visited some people and like, uh, their website got refreshed, but the Facebook page looks the same. Then there are other people who like every week they change it, you know, 
Um, what's your thoughts on that? So my rule of thumb, you don't have to follow this, but I think it's pretty a good one, is every quarter or every season. I change mine every season. I'm a seasonal kind of person. So like right now, if you go to my Facebook page and LinkedIn, I have my winter covers up. When spring hits, I'm going to change it to spring. When summer hits, summer, and so on, so on. Or you can do it by the quarter, mm-hmm. by maybe something special that's happening in that corner, quarter, a, a sale that you're having that you do every quarter, or a holiday. A ho- pick a holiday within that quarter, and maybe you want to do a holiday theme. But every quarter is a great idea, because it's also a great idea to change your passwords for all your social media or what? anything else. Mm-hmm. I change my passwords every single quarter. You just change the number on the very end. Or? No, I complete. I make it just as crazy as I did the first time. Can never remember it. But I've never knock on. Is there wood in here? Knock on some wood. I have never had my profile hijacked any on any platform, stolen, pretended to be by somebody else because I change it every quarter and I make the craziest passwords. So every quarter is just a good thing for everything. Change your cover, change your profile image, and oh profile image it should be a picture of you if you if you can i mean if you're some big corporation company of course maybe you not might not do that but if you're a small local business people want to see who they're working with so have a picture so not, of you not just a logo but also an image of them yes have it somewhere like on linkedin if it's if you have a team photo as your cover then yes your profile photo can be of your logo or vice versa. Somewhere there should be a picture of you, one or the other. All right. So, I'm sure Travis uh, Tom of Fuse Networks will be excited when you talk about password security and everything. When we had our uh, cybersecurity or you know episode and everything. So I didn't realize you'd have to do it for social because I haven't changed mine. I do forever. it forever. <laughs> I do it for everything. So, yes. Ever. <laughs> so I'll probably easily hack them. It's annoying, but. It's a necessary step to stay safe. So, okay. Is there a, another Facebook question? Is there a right way to do events on Facebook yes. when you promote it or just put it out there or uh, like promoting your event? There's the biggest thing that people are do wrong when they create an event on Facebook is they don't engage the event. I have a whole ebook and I did a webinar about it and everything, and I actually coach this. Engage your event. People are like, what the heck does that mean? Most people create an event and then they just walk away. They leave it there. Or, you know, they'll share, they'll share, share the link mm-hmm. other places, but they won't do anything in the event. You can schedule posts in the event, add videos, do polls and questions. Same things you can do on your page. You can do inside the event. Engage your event. Don't just create it and walk away. Create it and do something with it leading up to the day of the event you can slowly talk about maybe your big you know purchase you want to share with people at the end of your Mm -hmm. event start leading up to it inside the event engage your event no one does this still even if i tell people guilty we haven't guilty (laughs) something yeah engage your event engage it and then maybe we're not masterminds anymore joe no we're not (laughs) so do an ad for it promote it you can promote your event i mean that's um that real estate i had a real estate person that i was helping sell a million dollar home we sold that home because of an event that i promoted somebody saw my ad in seattle put an offer in the house and boom sold boom sold. engage the event promote the event so per- just curious for those for those real estate agents around what budget did this person spend on ads they did on ads they spent four hundred dollars. So four hundred dollars yielded over a million dollar sale. Yeah, actually, didn't it go fifty over something like that? And went fifty over asking price, fifty thousand over asking price. So pretty awesome. But four hundred dollars—that's an investment I'm willing to take to get the return that he got. You know, that's, awesome. That was pretty awesome. Well, Val, thanks for um, joining us on our podcast. So real quick, the three simple steps: connect first, build relationship, gain trust. We'll have more information on some of the tips we shared, not related to this, on like Facebook and Twitter stuff, on our website and our other posts. But um, yeah, thank you. thanks again to our sponsors, uh, CR Gutters and Advanced Septic Services. I'm Galen. I'm Joe. And we'll see you guys again soon. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Bye.